Steve Cole. I'm the Southern Regional Manager for MyTech and a Fellow of the Institute of Professional Engineers of New Zealand. In this segment, I want to deal with the basics of timber design. I want to cover off grading both historical and current, timber strength properties, and what structural timber grades are on the market today in New Zealand. So let's have a look at the history behind the grading systems in New Zealand. Now back in the 90s, the predominant structural grade that we had on the market as a designer was a product called number one framing grade in either radiator pine or Douglas fir. The difference here was that it was only ever visually graded. Now all that meant was that provided the timber met a certain criteria around knot size, warp, defect and various other criteria, you could grade it to that particular point and call it a number one framing grade. From there, as a designer, we could go away and design. Now, the problem was, as time went on, we started selling timber overseas, the overseas markets insisted that we actually have something called a mechanically graded product, which means that every stick had to go through some mechanical process. Now, we didn't have that system in New Zealand, and after a number of plagiarized systems in place, we now have our own internal mechanically graded process in place. This is where the more familiar terms that we have today come into play, being your SG6, your SG8, SG10 and SG12 grades, which form the bulk of our mainstream structural sawn timber market. The letters SG simply stand for structural grade. This means that each particular member has gone through a mechanical grading process to determine whether the strength properties meet the criteria of a specific grade. Now, when we grade these timbers, what's important to us as engineers are the four strength properties being the bending strength, the compression strength, the tension strength, and the actual stiffness. Each species of timber has its own specific strength values that have been established. Now, these are part of the New Zealand Timber Structure Standard. So if we look at the stress grading process, and for example, we want to target an SG8 grade, we would run a simple continuous bending test. Now once that test reaches the bending threshold of an SG8 grade, we can assume that the three remaining strength values of tension, compression, and stiffness align themselves according to that grade. We now have an SG8 grade of timber. As a matter of interest, the number in SG8 references the stiffness and we use it for identification. Now just remember, the higher the number, the greater the grade of timber. So let's now look at how these properties affect our design. If we take as a simple example, the design of say a garage door beam or a window lintel. Now the two strength properties we look at there would be either the bending strength or the stiffness. Now the design check would make sure that the beam was firstly strong enough so as not to break and secondly, stiff enough so as not to cause any undue deflection. Now let's take the example of a stud design. Quite different. It receives a vertical load due to the roof or a floor structure above it. There it relies on the compression strength. It also, if it's an external wall, receives a horizontal load due to wind. Now there we rely on the bending strength. Now the design check would ensure that either of those loads don't overstress the member. Given that we now have some understanding of the strength properties of timber, let's have a look at what structural timber products are available on the New Zealand market today. We have of course our generic grades of SG6, 8, 10 and 12 which we've talked of before, which form the mainstream sawn timber market in New Zealand. A number of timber companies now produce what are called engineered wood products. Now one of the most common ones of these is the LVL product or laminated veneer lumber. Rather than being solid timber, the LVL is simply a number of veneers peeled from the log, glued back, and cut to form commonly used sawn timber sizes. Now the end result is typically a very consistent performance, plus a significant increase in strength. Now this is mainly due to the randomizing of the defects during the gluing process. Now we also have on the market the glue lamb, which is typically larger laminates glued either horizontally or vertically, and the target market typically will be larger lintels or beams. 
So in summary, we do have a clear set of rules and guidelines around the structural timber market within New Zealand. This is all aimed at improving the performance within the construction sector. It does, however, still leave room for companies to come up with innovative solutions to suit specific markets. Well, I hope that's given you some insight to the structural timber market within New Zealand. For further information, make sure you keep viewing the What's It All About series.